It's Tuesday, the 26th of September. Welcome to the check-in. It's brought to you by Blue Chew. Listen, I love Blue Chew. Everybody loves a guy who's self-assured in the bedroom, and Blue Chew can help make sure you're ready whenever the mood strikes. Blue Chew is an online service that delivers ED medicine straight to your door. Nobody knows nothing. With the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but at a fraction of the cost. Just sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you, re you receive your prescription within days. It's all online, no doctor's office, nobody giving you a brow beaten. It's a beautiful thing. They each come in a little blue package. When you feel something or you bump into somebody that could be a stranger, you pop one and you do what you need to do. Blue Chew comes in a discreet package so your nosy no neighbors don't ever know what they got unless they want the yum yum. You know what I'm saying? Ah, Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Again, chew it and do it, Jack. That's a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you have promo code Joey at checkout. Just pay $5 for shipping. Again, that's BlueChew.com. Code Joey to receive your first month. Visit BlueChew.com for more details. Remember, promo code Joey. And the check-in is also brought to you by Babbel. Listen, I know I'm babbling right now. Anyway, only 22% of Americans speak a language. Can you believe that? Even me, Uncle Joey, I got like three languages. <laughs> if you want to shake up your daily routine, why not learn a new language and help raise that rate? You ever get on a on an Uber? You don't know what nobody's saying. This is the perfect time when you get an Uber to have Babbel. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or using other language apps, a little more than games. Babbel is an effective way to give your Uber driver a tremendous ear beat. Designed by over 150 language experts, using Babbel for just 15 hours, 15 hours, has shown to be equivalent to a full semester of college language course. Listen, I played with Babbel a little bit. I like their little Spanish course. Give it a try. You know, Spanish is the number one language people are talking right now. You want to jump on that bandwagon. You always want to be able to get into the baseball game. You know what I'm saying? With over 10 million subscriptions sold, Babbel is a real language learning for real conversations. Here's a special limited deal for our listeners to get you started right now. Get 55% off your Babbel prescriptions, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash Joey. Again, babbel.com slash Joey. I'm getting you. 55% off. Who gives you a deal like that? Nobody. Spell Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash Joey. Rules and restrictions may apply. Welcome to the check-in. Turn off your TVs. Run for your lives. It's over. They didn't put you on this planet just to give up. If Uncle Joey could do it, I could rule the world. That's what you got to be thinking. Welcome back to check -in. What's the story? Stop wiggling. All right. What? Well, you Kippur. can never tell. I'll never stop. The Jews you can never don't get me to stop. On Yom Kippur. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> after Yom Kippur to all the brothers in the struggle. Like I've said for years, don't sleep on the Jews. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> What's but happening? Jews, Jews also aren't supposed to eat edibles on Yom Kippur. You don't That's eat shit. Jews can what do you mean edibles? it's a lie? In the Bible for the fucking Gentiles and for the Corinthians and for the fucking <laughs> But the Jews do what the fuck they want on Yom oh. Kippur. There's only one night you don't want to do anything, and that's the night the fucking ghost comes in through the door. Because if you eat mushrooms or edibles, you might fucking see him. Oh no! You mean Elijah? Yeah. We want him to come, but no, you can't. That's the one day a year Jews don't eat. We don't eat. You can't eat. You're not supposed to have edibles. Leave me alone. <laughs> Look, you shoot him intravenously, <laughs> like I'm about to do to you, cocksucker. Can you do that? 
because I'll go up there with a girl named Nancy with one eye and a needle. <laughs> You'll be fucking done. You understand me? Done. Kaput. Why does she have one eye? Because she lost it in Vietnam. I don't know. I never asked her. You ever see somebody with a missing eye? You don't ask them. How'd you lose your eye? That's an interesting eye patch you have. <laughs> no, I, how, how, many, how often do you see people with one eye? I don't think I've ever seen someone with one eye. A lot. Oh. I live in Germany. Remember the time we saw one of the guy in San Diego? Oh, yeah. When the pirate and Dean oh, Del Rey still has that tape. I still have it. Hold on. I just dropped it. Let me find it. Or, or Joe, Where if you can go to my Instagram. Really it. It's Yom Kippur. All I'll find it. I, I still have the clip. I farted on you. Knock it off. What you, how was your weekend? My weekend was pretty good, man. I I didn't do shit. I didn't do shit, to be honest with you. I had a show on Thursday that I didn't do great at. But thank you to everyone who came out. A couple of people from the check-in came out. Listen, then you this can't week, be inviting people from the check-in. And then you, you told me to. Bomb on them and shit. But I didn't bomb. You did I didn't. And you got a dump. You got a double check that you can't fucking drop a bomb on these motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? You got to say time out. I got some people here from the check in. I got to start this all over again. <laughs> I don't think they'd like that. Yes, they would. Two they hours into a show, like I got to start over. Yeah. You can't start over. Yes, well, you I, can. Who says? I did. It's an art. Who says? It's an art. You can do whatever the fuck you want. You get on stage, you're having a rough time for two minutes, call a timeout. Listen, I got to go get my head together. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. I didn't know what Have I was we, thinking. I don't know if I, if I ever told this story. Do you remember the time that you convinced me that Chappelle was going to go before me? Like the first time I did the belly room with yeah. Eric? Oh, we fucking... <clears throat> you were it was sweating bullets all goddamn day. Well, you did because you didn't tell me. You told me you get to get to the comedy store. Eric Rocha, who was on the church a bunch, a very funny comic. We went, and we didn't even feel comfortable going. There's a, a comics-only bar at the store. And I felt like an asshole. Like, I didn't want to go. Like I wasn't going to just walk in there. So we asked somebody, and they got us in. And immediately, you were with Agostino. And the first thing you did, you didn't say hi. You threw, you, remember you had those edible mints for a minute? You had edible only, mints. I had oh. some edible gasoline, too. What are we getting at here? <laughs> You threw them in my mouth and you said, hey, you're not hosting anymore. Chappelle's going up. He wants to do half an hour in front of you. And you, everyone in the bar was like, oh, shit. Like everyone. So you let me burn and fucking sweat. I mean, half an hour late, we get up to the fucking belly room and you're like, ah, he's not here. And I, I, I was so high and so nervous. I forgot Eric's name when I was bringing him up. I had been doing comedy with him for two years. You convinced me that Chappelle wanted to do 30 in front of me. You got to, that's part, and bro, when you realize that comedy is all mental, you'll do a lot better. You know, you, for years, I put this fear in my head. I had a thousand different fears from they have white hair, to they're drinking too much, you know, to <laughs> half of them are Jewish, half of them are Spanish. You know, it's half of them I grew up with. I can't do this material in front of them. And then one day I said, fuck them all. So, but let's talk about Thursday night. and why you thought you didn't do well. Because that's another part of the show that I want to talk to you about. When you have a spot during the week and mm -hmm. it doesn't go your way, let's review it. I don't need to watch the fucking tape. Okay. By the sound of your voice and your honesty, I know where you're taking this. You know, we can't always kill every night. Right, right. now, you're a five-year comic. You're working on percentages. You know? I, I don't kill... People say I'm, I'm I, I always remember you were very, and I don't want to say hard on yourself. You, I use the word realistic when I'm talking about it because you've had nights that I saw you that I thought you killed and you're like, eh, and it, I haven't been doing like, I'm not killing every night, but I went on a run there of having pretty good like sets. I was happy with bees, like at least. And then on Thursday night, I just. I can blame some things about the show, like where I what, how where I went up. But the the comedy club is great. I just I didn't feel like I was in the moment, and I just felt like I was. I've been trying to do different orders, and it, you know what? We you ever go to a comedy movie in the theater, and if you f laugh the whole time. And then you go and you try to watch it at home and it sucks. Two years later? 
or even whenever. It just sucks. The audience plays a big part. And for me, when I start off not great, it tends like I can sometimes dig myself out of it. But if like the audience isn't into it, I just feel like I'm not really present or flowing. I've been there. I loved, you know, for a long time, like you, I struggled, you know, uh, once you, the first three jokes bomb, they ain't no coming back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Once you're, once you're 0 and 2, <laughs> we're done at that level. You know, it's just, it's just the way the yeah. ball bounces, you know, you're 0 and 2. He threw two <laughs> fucking perfect strikes down your throat. What are the chances of you coming up with anything else? Uh -huh. You know, and maybe you didn't see the pitch. Maybe you weren't focused, you know. Um, I was the king of bombing. It got to a point where I embraced it because I knew this would pass. What do you mean I, you embraced it? Listen, man, when you're shit, you're shit. I'm not <laughs> going to become something overnight after one set that I'm not. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just not going to. Uh, so I kind of embraced it being there for a while. And when I would have a good set, it would feel that much better. Oh, it feels great. And I still, guys, you know, like I've told you a thousand times, I bombed in bars, I bombed on one-nighters in different states, and I bombed at the place where it really mattered. I bombed horribly at the improv, horribly on a Monday night in front of everybody, and I bombed miserably at the store. And once you come back from that, bombing ain't that bad. It's like going to jujitsu and getting tapped. But they also, I want you to attack. You know, I don't ever want you to live in that bomb. That's the most important thing, is living in that bomb. Three years from now, when you're at a theater, nobody's going to remember that bomb. But bomb, fucking bomb. You know what's on my mind? <laughs> bomb, you know. So don't always remember. It don't fucking matter. I'm telling you this 30 years in, those bombings, the first 10 years, you know, it's like uh, a football team when they first get together. And for four years, they just suck. They're 0 and 11, 2 and 1, 2 and 9, you know, 5 and whatever the fuck mathematical equation is. And then one year, they just come out and they come out fucking throwing heat. That's comedy. But sometimes they'll lose. When San Francisco 49ers in their heyday, they could win 18 fucking touchdowns, uh, 18 Super Bowls, but they couldn't beat the New Orleans Saints. What does it feel like? <clears throat> Do you feel any different to like, imagine you were headlining a theater. If you bomb one of those shows. Horrible. Is it worse? Or is Horrible. it the, it just, it just One of the worst things I did the last five years was that night I bombed in New Orleans. That, And that fucking picture hangs in my bathroom. So every time I pee, well, I got to poop, I look up on the wall and I go, yeah, New Orleans, fucking tremendous. It's a great picture the House of Blues gave me. But till this day, I just didn't like how I performed. And I remember I got better after that. Like, you know, you learn from every bombing at every level. The other day I got an email from a comic and he said that... Uh, we spoke a lot about bombing, and he said he went to the comedy mothership last night. That last weekend, he seen the bomb of bombs. Oh. It was like somebody big, you know, and he didn't mean it in a jokey way. He wasn't putting the guy down. He was just asking me, like, how do you recover from that? You know, it's a hot club. It's sold out, and everybody just watched you fucking bomb at Joe Rogan's club, you know, and I told him the comic is a fucking professional. You know, fucking Aaron Judge won't hit a home run for two weeks. Then he pulls three of them out of his ass, and you forget about those two weeks. Right. That's – I don't know if you can relate to this. Where I am right now, and, like, I'll have a weekend sometimes, and then it will be, like, eight weeks until a weekend. If I bomb the last show, or re really any time I bomb, like, I'll run to an open mic. I'll run – I, I like I have to get to another spot and like it kills me if I have like a few weeks until another real show. No, that's the right attitude. You're not gonna not get on stage because you bombed one night. If you get if you bomb on a fucking Tuesday night, 
I hope you wake up looking for an open mic. I hope you find an Irish. I hope you find an Irish bar that'll fucking uh, you know. I hope you find an Irish bar that does an open mic at eight a.m. or you're something wonderful. <laughs> an eight a.m. open mic. Yeah, no, it, it. I don't know how else to compare it. Like it's just. I, f- I feel like I have like shit on me, like literal shit. Well, I, well, if I don't get a decent set in after a bomb, at least something. Yeah, I have to, you know, even early on, I would go home and depending on what level or what year I was in, you know, there were some nights that I, I cried after a bombing. You know, there were some nights that I went home and wrote the set out. There were some nights, I'm not going to lie to you, I went home and blamed it on the audience. Like, that's what a chump comic does. A chump comic, well, the, he had a fucking Mickey Mouse sound system. Well, after the first minute, you fucking drop the mic and yell over him. You know, I'm deaf. Nothing sucks than going to a show, and I can't hear the comic or something else. So, right. you know, if, it, if, the, if you know the whole room has that problem, Drop the mic and get on a fucking table. I, I don't give a fuck what it takes. But and you have to look at it that way. You know, if you bomb on a Tuesday night and you're not at an 1130 matinee of the Expendables for <laughs> fucking doing 10 minutes in front of those jamokes, you got a problem. That's where the problem lies. You're not going to be a good comic because you're scared of getting back on the horse. That's it. You just go back there that day and you're going to bomb again at that movie theater. And well, that's yeah, your problem you better because you had the balls to go down there and bomb. Do you think they'd arrest oh, I you? Told you this. I never told nobody this. What? I did comedy for about a year, you know, and I thought I was Joey Bananas. You know, I didn't <laughs> know what it took to be a comic. I thought you got on stage four or five times and people would light your cigarettes and whatnot. And that was like a, you know, when I started comedy the first three years. There were still a lot of national contests, Lee. Oh, and yeah. They were very good. Uh, Johnny Walker Black had one. HBO had one in Las Vegas that you got invited to by sending a tape. And then you did the top five comics did spots in front of fucking agencies. Uh, you know, I actually won the Bex Broker Joker fucking uh, competition in Boulder in 91. Congratulations. There were a lot of, lot of fucking uh, con- contests. And I'll never forget that there was one like on a Thursday morning at Comedy Works in Denver. I had been on stage maybe seven times, <laughs> you know, and I already, you know, I was already on the phone with fucking Seinfeld, you know, what do you think? Mr. And uh, I go down to this thing bright and early. I stand online. There's about 30 comics. I know like maybe four of them, five of them at that time. That's how much of an open mic I was. I didn't say a word, but I'll never forget that I saw a bunch of guys with NBC shirts and HBO shirts and Zany's Comedy Club and, you know, like big comedy clubs in New York. I forget. It was a, it was 30 fucking years ago. <clears throat> and I remember how I got intimidated how I got intimidated. And I went down, I signed my name. I sat there. I watched like the first 10 comics. I was like number 82, (laughs) you know, and I think you only had three minutes. Right. Of course. And I'm going to forget at one point, I just walked out of there. Really? I ran to the bus and I was so ashamed of myself. I never said that story before. I just thought about it about a month ago, how ashamed I was of myself. I had to walk back to the bus station and get on the bus. And that was the longest bus ride in my fucking life, G. Let's back up, though, for a second. So you, before the before you saw, like, when you were on your way down there, before you saw the line, were you confident? Yeah. I was probably high from the night before. <laughs> you know, and I thought I was going to go down there and spank them all, you know. And, and, yeah, and, and you think just seeing the other comics, like, you... The fact that they had done other rooms, like, I, like I said, I only knew like five or six of the other comics. You know, I was a, at the time I was a Boulder comic, 
And I did the broker on Tuesday night, so I never went into the comedy works on Tuesday. So I only did one-nighters when Jimmy Abeda would call me or somebody. I'd go to fucking South Denver, some uh, taco place or something like that. So I didn't really know a lot of people. So nobody ever nobody ever said a word to me about it, guy. But I always remembered. And I remembered how shitty I felt. Not that I was going to win, that I left. Yeah. That was a horrible feeling for a savage like myself. So after that, I looked at it a little differently, you know. And I think a lot of young comics should look at it that way. Get on stage as much as you can. I, it was very frustrating to me when I heard stories about guys like you that were doing 30, 35 sets a month living in Boston. And you know me, Lee, I'm a hustler. And here I am doing 16 sets in Denver. Right. That's to the max, you know? So you, I mean, you always had a good work. I'm surprised. Was that the only time you bailed on a set? Yeah, probably. That wasn't a set though. That was a contest. Big okay. Difference. What's the difference? <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> You're doing a set in front of a bunch of people. Right. That are looking at you from a subjective type of manner. Okay. And that's a weird thing for a comic. Either a comic could do that or they can't do that. I ended up doing well in the Seattle competition in 95. But I, I did better than what I anticipated. And then I went to San Francisco in... 98 and i quit after the third night that was brutal <laughs> what was brutal about it everything came out of your pocket the yeah. gas the driving the hotels and then you got there some night and the judges were san francisco comics you know uh, no you know yeah. it, it was just a party and they were just milking you and uh celia cruz was playing at the house of blues on a saturday night and i had a main room spot because I oh, thought okay. I wouldn't do well. I thought I'd get disqualified or something. And I was right. I didn't want to be there. And I just drove back to L.A. I caught Celia Cruz. And I caught my midnight spot at the motherfucking main room. Oh, shit. Yeah, I fucking, I don't like, I don't like contests. I've done yeah. two. I never do well. What were you, I don't want to talk about, we don't have to talk about comedy the whole time. I, uh, no, no, no. I'm happy you brought this up with the bombing. But we were talking about something earlier. That because we're both fans of cinema. Oh yeah, uh -huh. I think our real big connection is cinema. I remember going to your house one day and seeing all your CDs and all your movies. I mean, half of them were shitty movies. No, they were uh, not. Some of them were terrible, terrible movies. But <laughs> fucking, uh, you know, uh, I love it. I, I love went over there and I noticed that you were a movie buff and you'd go to the movies. A lot. And one of our similarities is we really enjoy going to the movies alone. I got no beef with that. Oh, I love it. I, like I got to talk to people. The least people bother me that they're cold, <laughs> thirsty, their fucking knees hurt, you know, all that shit. Like it just, and now for the first time in my life, I've actually achieved the goal of turning my fucking phone off. You turn your phone all the way off. When I lived in L.A., I always had it on. Right. And 20 minutes into the movie, some fuck calls you from an agency. You get up to call them. There goes 10 minutes of the movie. And then you sit down and you can't stop thinking about what they called you about. Right. But we were talking about the fucking Stallone movie, how it made Ugats this week. It made $2 <laughs> because it was $100 million to make or something like that. So if you make a if you got a hundred million dollar movie, I'm just throwing a number out there, and it makes eight million dollars opening weekend. That's not bad. That's and a I bomb. Movie ate, I guess this weekend it was the worst box office in ever for how and, and, and you said something interesting because you were right. All up and down the East Coast, it was raining. This weekend was the perfect like. It's like everyone else, all like everyone else who like goes out and hikes and they love doing outdoor. This weekend was like, I would have killed it. I would have we killed discussed it. Discussed going to the movies. You and I discussed on yeah Friday, and I go, I don't know what's out there. And you said the Equalized. I said I caught it the first night. Right. 
<clears throat> because moving back here, I have three theaters close to me, 15 okay. minutes. And tickets, they always have two sets of shows going on at one, two on the other. So I always got an option, you know. And I'm just trying to take it back to see what. And I've been to the theaters. I've had a great time because all the movies I've gone to see are basically fucking empty. Even though mm -hmm. they're blockbusters, they've been fucking empty when I go there. Yeah. And I know that when I take my daughter, it's a $50 fucking show for uh, the popcorn. We're part of like the AMC fucking network. We get coupons and discounts. I mean, yeah, the they have different lines to sign. They have eight different groups you could sign up for now. I, I loved AMC. I worked at AMC for, it was my favorite job. I got free movie tickets. And they, let me ask you, why did you decide not to go? This weekend? Mm hmm. Because there was nothing out there. Even if I didn't want to watch the Expendables, I've never watched an Expendable movie in my life. Not even close. I loved every type of genre movie, but that didn't look appealing to me. I couldn't go for it. Listen, I've seen one of the greatest combo movies of all time The Dirty Dozen, The Magnificent Seven, the original one, not the one with what's her name's fucking half a fag husband. Was also on the Avengers and shit. I don't like none of that stuff. Chris Pratt? Yeah, Chris Pratt. <laughs> I don't believe he's a fucking superhero. So, the, but the, so that you, those were good, but you didn't. What was it? Was it the age in the Expendables? Why don't you buy the Expendables? I, I don't know. And I look like an Expendable type of guy. <laughs> like if you see me, you're like, oh, that motherfucking moron's going to be down there with popcorn and a hot dog and his shirt off with a. <laughs> on his chest, you know, yeah, <laughs> because I know the expendable people, the guys that go there have to be like jet fans that don't get tickets, like they, <laughs> they go, fuck it, let's go see the expendables. And instead of wearing a green shirt, they wear like no shirt with a tattoo and they yell every time Stallone's beating people up. I can't deal with that, not right now, dog. That, There's a lot to of me, things I can't deal with right now anymore. There's oh, yeah, like what else? Anything else? I was telling Jimmy Florentine yesterday. They went to see uh, Brett Michaels from Poison. I can't do that no more. I can't go see a guy with mascara on. He's 58 years old. <laughs> Knock it off. And he's singing Sweet Home Alabama, which burns me up even more than anything. He's what's like, it's a Sweet party. Get the fuck out of here. What? What about, like, what's wrong with Sweet Home Alabama? It's a Leonard Skinner song. Why is there a guy up there with mascara on singing <laughs> that fucking song? That's what I'm getting at, Lee. I what about kids? I'll tell you what, what else. Kiss? I, got I got all of a sudden, about three months ago, I discovered this is between us. We're family. Of course. Not only do I have a fungi toenail, not only do uh -oh. I have a fucking a burster in my ear, not only can I breathe. You know, the 60s had Uncle Joey hard. I've been stealing father time for years. Once I got 60, the warranty went kaput. <laughs> You know, that was it. It went kaputs. I don't have a Volkswagen. I don't have the Nazi 10-year, $100,000 fucking uh, whatever. So what was I talking about? Oh. <laughs> you said, I don't know. You said you have something new to tell, like, that's happening to you. All right. So now I discovered, because I'm a clean ear fanatic. <laughs> Motherfucker. Don't bother me, please. Go fuck yourself, will you? Uh, I discovered what happened here. Hold on. Go. There you go. There you go. These fucking miserable fucks. God damn it. Uh, I discovered yeah. one morning, first of all, this is one of my things that bother. You ever talk to somebody and you can see a piece of wax sticking out of your ear? Uh-huh. You ever go to breakfast somebody and they got wax in the wax? I don't give a fuck if you got tooth, uh, food in your teeth. I don't give a fuck if you got the Sandman in your eyes. I really don't. As long as you don't hit me with a shot of bad breath, and I don't see it on earwax. I used to go to breakfast with this dude, and he always had like earwax sticking out. Always. And this is 1998 when I first got to LA. He was supposed to be a big night manager, but he never cleaned his fucking ears out. And that always bothered me about the guy. That's why I didn't sign with him because he he had dirty fucking ears. I don't like people who got dirty fucking ears, right? So now I'm fucking 60, and a couple of months ago I discovered. That have wax in the mornings in my ear. When I scratch it sometimes, I'm like, what the fuck is this? Now, I'm bad enough with that. I'm ashamed of that. 
So I get up in the morning now, and as I'm peeing, I'm cleaning the fucking earwax out of my ear, right? Uh huh. And then I discovered after about a month of that, not only did I have excessive wax in my left ear only, not my right ear, that these edibles are coming in because I can see yeah. you like an AI character. <laughs> I also discovered that the wax in my left ear stinks like fucking my belly button, like used to. You ever you ever smell a bad belly button? Oh, I I, my, I smell my belly button all the time. That's how that I check to see if I have COVID. I, see, that's a problem right there. Why? That's a problem. And, and hold on one second. Anyway, what I was trying to get at is that my earwax on the fucking smells. smells so bad only on the left side. The right side smells. And not only that, it's even thicker. Like, it's a fucking... Like, I got to clean it out with a Q-tip. And then I got to get, like, a fucking pen. I got, like, a certain pen I got from a funeral parlor. And it's got a certain edge. <laughs> anyway, what do you mean a write, like a writing pen? Yeah, those are <gasps> listen. Nothing cleans your ears better than a big pen. The cap of the big pen, you could double. You could do a blast of coke and then clean your ears with the thing. And the coke sticks to the wax. At least you got something in the morning when you wake up. And oh. now for a word from our sponsor. Hey, this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Listen. If anxiety has you paralyzed like it had me, it's really hard to live the life you want. Therapy is an amazing way to just break it down. Your anxiety so you can live to the best that you can, guys. BetterHelp is online therapy. That's an amazing tool. And all you do is take a quick quiz to get your match with a licensed therapist, and you'll be on your way. Tip top magoo. You can talk to your therapist on a video chat, by phone or even just message. However, whatever you want to do therapy is totally up to you. Listen, when I moved to Jersey, I had some struggles with anxiety. Boom! I contacted BetterHelp, and here we are three years later. I'm jumping up and down like a savage. If you don't get to gel with your first therapist, you can easily switch anytime at no additional charge, no questions asked, okay? Get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R, H E L P. Visit betterhelp.com slash Diaz today, D I A Z, to get 10% off on your first month. That's betterhelp.com slash Diaz. Did anyway, you ever? I've never talked to you about my earwax issues. I don't feel, I don't, shouldn't put them on front street, but fuck it. You know, maybe somebody's uncle has stinky ears. I don't know. Give me some advice. Email. Did you... You know, they have a pen, like a thing, a cleaner with a camera in it that you can att attach to your phone and you can like see inside your ear and clean the wax out so you don't have to like do it with a big pen. Let's pretend I eat a mushroom and I forget about it. <laughs> and all of a sudden I get a sudden whack each of my ear and I stick that pen in there. Yeah, you don't want to be around. Let me tell you something. Those mushrooms are starting to become dangerous, by the way. Oh, they yeah. They finally backfired this weekend. I had a rough oh. fucking Sunday, but it was a good Sunday. I uh, got up, did what I had to do around the house with the family. And at one o'clock, I got to Jimmy Florentine's, part of the Florentine crime family. I got to his house a little earlier to get a good seat. And I don't know, somewhere along the line, I ate like six pieces of a tremendous bar. I hate like when that happens. Just, yeah. And it, it got a little something on the wing. But then ABX, the makers of the Tom Segura killers, <laughs> Uh, in fact, you could put this picture up that I sent you, the bag, the maker of the Tom Segura set. Okay. They, sent me like a, they gave me like a little bag of like a, these organic mushrooms, you know. Well, let's start from Saturday. Saturday, I had taffies, mushroom taffies. And I, I can't see without my glasses, right? So I look at the bag and I see 2,000 milligrams. Okay. So each piece of taffy is 2,000 milligrams. So I take a half a bite out of it. I wait an hour when nothing's happening. I'm watching Colorado getting beat up by Oregon State. <laughs> if you had Colorado in the 30, it's still a loser. You know what I'm saying? Colorado <laughs> had the worst weekend of their fucking life. I wouldn't want to be in Colorado today because there's got to be an earthquake or something coming there. They got beat up in college and forget about what happened. That dude, Sean Payton, should get fired today. Oh, my God. I'm surprised. He... That's, a, that's a bomb of, like, I would... What, 70 to 20? That's crazy. That's not good. That's good. That's not good. 
Something's got to come from this. They got to put the hammer down. When the whip comes down, it's time, cocksuckers. You can't be losing 70 to 20 on week three of the NFL. This can't be happening. Now, on the other side of that, I ate those mushrooms. Mm -hmm. First quarter, those things started backfiring. I started seeing things. So for a minute there, I saw all those touchdowns. I'm like, oh, this is part of the mushroom trip. Miami ain't scoring all those points. And then I got up. I had to take a mushroom shit. Oh, my God. It stunk so bad, and I went into like a mushroom trance when I was in there, and I almost fell off the toilet. It was hilarious. Even Jim goes, what happened to you in the bathroom? But the killer one, I brought a whistle. What? <clears throat> I brought a whistle, like a, like a regular whistle that you give like, you know, when people get hit on the head or, or they see somebody getting robbed, they blow a whistle. Like, that's going to really fucking save you, right? <laughs> I know what a whistle. Oh my God. Why why do you have a whistle? Oh yeah, when you were refereeing your call your daughter's I was thing. It, right. So I took the whistle with me, and every oh. time they scored, I would blow a fucking whistle. And those people were going crazy. But my friend's son was there, great <laughs> kid. And every time I blew the whistle, he wasn't used to Uncle Joey. He would elevate two inches from the fucking couch. Cause I would just go beep, 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 beep. And then I would go beep, 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 beep. beep. It was like the Cubans at the Miami Stadium. They don't just show up with water and cheese like these fucking Gentiles. They show up with a chicken, a conga drum, some tambourines. That's how you win a game, Jack. You must have been blowing that whistle all goddamn day. I blew the whistle all fucking day. I don't have to blow it. It just it comes with uh, a, a, a... Come on, though. Who you, the fuck you, you think you're doing? You have a, 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 a motorized whistle? Yeah, like one that you just press. Beep, you shouldn't beep. be allowed to have that. You know, it's, I'm danger. Now I stop at lights. I see people. I blow the whistle and beat the horn. They got a double fucking. <laughs> you, know, you know how they have those apps where like it's like called like neighborhood and people in your neighborhood can write shit? I guarantee someone's like someone's blowing a whistle in New Jersey. <laughs> Are you blowing whistles at people? Oh, you what? Oh. You're blowing, what do you mean what? You're blowing whistles at people now? If I see people like waiting for the bus, I hit them with a whistle and a beep. <laughs> I hit them with a double. They don't see the whistle. They don't think it's me because my hand's out the window hitting the buzzer. Oh. So I'm out the window like it's a beautiful day to be alive. They're at the bus <laughs> over here, over there. I bang them with a whistle. They pop up. Then I hit them with a horn. I keep going. They don't know nothing. I saw a guy with a flat today in the rain. I hit him with a double <laughs> whistle. <laughs> Uh, oh, uh, that poor guy's <laughs> I'm just trying to have a fun time. I'm an old man. I ain't got time for. And you don't tell anybody. And you don't. You don't. I think you would do this whether or not you were a comic. Like you would just. I think that's part of who you are. It's just torturing. You love it. Like that guy. I bet you're gonna giggle tonight as you're going to bed thinking about the guy with the changing the tire. Oh my god, that was tremendous. <laughs> Because he was just Monday morning. He was having a bad day as it was. He didn't need somebody beeping the horn at him, giving him a disco whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, you got to find comedy wherever it comes. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes comedy is right fucking in front of you. It's so silly how in front of you it is sometimes. Oh, uh, But hey. Let's talk All about right. DraftKings and what they got to offer you this week. And I had a good week Absolutely. at DraftKings. How'd you do? Two out of three. I did well. I picked uh, San Diego and then over Minnesota. And I I, um, I had the Patriots and the under, I think. But those I lost. We lost the over with Baltimore and Indy. It went under 44, which is crazy. Saturday, I took a beating, a lead type beating. Not a beating because you know me. I bet it light. I don't believe the hype. I took Colorado. a 50% boost from DraftKings on college football. And then Sunday, I opened up with Miami, small, because the line dropped from six and a half to six. I also went with my team, Detroit Lions. They always cover. They're like a thief in the night. They always deliver the goods. But they lost, right? Didn't they lose? They won. They won. Oh, they we, won? Okay. You know, Joy Bananas. I had Cincinnati giving Pittsburgh a run and a half. On the Lord's Day, after they dropped two, you got to go with them. And they came through like a fat cat. And there was something else. And that, oh, I took a beating with this one. Not a beating. Again, 25 bucks. 
the Jets plus the fucking three and a half. I thought New England would beat them by three and I'd win with the hook, but not this week. The Jets are just that fucking bad. And now for a word from DraftKings, Jack. Hey, we're back here with another week of football and DraftKings has us covered for great offers every game. Again, new customers bet the small five hours and get 200 instantly in bonus bets for a price of a cup of coffee. That's right. You'll walk away with an instant winner. All customers can take advantage of two new offers every single game this September. Football's more fun when you're in on the action. Stop sitting on the sideline. Download the app now and sign up with code Joey. J-O-E-Y. New customers. Again, $5 to get you 200 in bonus bets. And then all you do is wait for profit boost. This, that. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL with code Joey, J-O-E-Y. With DraftKings, the crown is yours. One problem. Do you have a gambling problem? We can't have that. Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. If you're in New York, call 8778-HOPE-NEW-YORK or text Hope, New York, 467-369. If you're in Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. Get your act together. Download the app, use code Joey, and let's get in on the action. It's time to have some fun, especially if you had Colorado last week. I sent that dude that text I sent you with the naked woman with the big tits. <laughs> up and up and down. What was she saying in Israeli? Shout out to in Hebrew. She was saying uh, Happy New Year. Who's better than me? I sent it, it to was- every Jewish American I knew, and everybody got back to me. Thank you. One guy even wrote me what you told me, which was fucking creepy. Which is what? He wrote on there that that was a good distraction to his fasting. Oh, yeah, because you don't eat. T- you're not supposed to eat today. So what time? Sunday. It's sundown. I think I'm almost positive the night before till sun up. Or uh, it's, yes, it's sundown to sundown. I think. So they're eating right now. <laughs> oh, all right, yeah. Right now, right now they're throwing down like fucking savages. You've never seen so much locks. I used to go to it. There was a family that we were friends with. That was Italian, but the one of them converted to marry a Jewish lady. Very, very nice. More food than I've seen in my entire life. You get was Jews that haven't eaten for a whole day. Oh shit, dude! They, no package. They ain't leaving nothing but silverware. If have that. you had, have you had challah before? Challah, what mm-hmm. the bread? Mm-hmm. Yeah, not bad. I mean, I wouldn't put a meatball on it, but. People, it's like Black Friday at the end of the services. They're very, they're polite, but it's they're moving fast because at the end of the last one, when you can eat, they have hala and like grape juice for kids or wine for adults with apples and honey. I look, I don't eat. That's the only time of the year I eat apples. I don't eat apples. That's your problem. I know. You gotta eat more apples. I've been dropping apples in the morning and at night. Tip top magoo. Everything comes out nice and smooth in the morning. <laughs> Only thing is I can't do a bong hit and shit at the same time. I had that superb bathroom in California where I just opened up the back door, sat down, blew a bong hit, and that missile would come out of the launch like a fucking boop. Nothing. You I can't that. you can't cut a window into your bathroom? No. What am I gonna cut a know. fucking special window and then fucking uh, a raccoon moves in? Forget about it. I got a lot of animals down here, Lee. A lot of animals, dog. What do you think about them? What's your favorite? You know, when I when I pet the raccoons, it's great. When I feed them, <laughs> I'm fucking retarded. I don't know. They're all my favorite. You, know? you don't like looking at them. You don't. I don't know. Fucking maybe maybe like I don't know. I, I think deer are cool to look at. Sometimes do you see a wolf? I I grew up around like like wolves and shit. Like what is it? No, coyotes? I see a like fox a- from time to time. There's a fox that lives by the little leaf field up the corner there. <laughs> I swear to God, I used to walk there, and I got attacked by a deer there one time, so I stopped walking up there. 
And then I realized why, because it was a mom and a little fucking cub, whatever, whatever they call them. I'm not a hunter. So <laughs> Is it was a baby deer and a big deer? The, I think that it's a fawn, isn't it? Right at, yeah, fawn. And that motherfucker was coming at me. And then I've seen a fox up there because one day I decided to walk up there through the back instead of drive. Fuck mm -hmm. that! I'll never do that again. That's when I saw the fox. I was like, I'm a dead man. But I see a lot of deer, a lot of beautiful looking deer. Believe it or not, there was two turkeys on my corner the other day. If I would have had a bow and arrow, everybody would have had Thanksgiving on my block. You know what I'm saying? But dude, there's they, turkeys that come around like once a month. Those are scary. Like those, I didn't know deer attacked, but like I've been like they're on the news here. Like there's like this this year, like an old lady got attacked by a turkey. Like those things are are vicious. Dog, the best was about three weeks ago on Route Nine. Somebody a truck. Like a, a ton of potato chips fell off there. Like, oh, I mean, I saw them on the thing. Like, it must have happened 10 minutes before I got there. It's not a bit, it's the nine, but to the side, it was one of those side streets. And uh -huh. the guy made the left turn and he dropped the point. I went by there the next day. It was all raccoons, not raccoons, I'm sorry, squirrels eating them. Oh, shit. They had the fucking, uh, those pork loins. You know they were. That's what they were eating. They were eating. They were eating fuck. pork rinds. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, pork rinds. The low sugar, whatever the fuck they are. <laughs> Those red ones from Wawa. I'm thinking about Wawa tonight and shit. I haven't eaten dinner yet. Oh, what's gonna be your order? My order at Wawa. Yeah. Short, short sub. Okay. Little one. Tuna, American cheese, red wine vinegar, oil, extra snow. Salt and pepper, lettuce, tomato, onions, hot peppers. I'm surprised you go with. I know I've you told me this, but I'm tuna out is like scary. Like that's tuna is like scary because you're eating some dolphin. You got a little meow meow soup in there. You got some eyeballs in there. But this is Jersey. You serve a back back tuna. It's not gonna work out for you, Wawa. I mean, right. I told Ari the other day when Ari first came to my house. He ran in here like a fucking child with 10 bags. And I go, well, what's going on with you? He goes, you have a Wawa. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? He goes, I love Wawa. The sandwiches are great. And I'm like, this guy's fucking retarded. I actually had to eat my words and call him a week ago and go, you were right. I love Wawa so much, I downloaded the motherfucking app. Do you put your order in before you get there? Yep. I would never have guessed you would do that. Do you make your wife do it or do you do it? We both do it. <laughs> That's we awesome. How often do you go to Wawa? Once a week, like at okay. night, once a week for like a dinner. Like we get caught up here with fucking a softball game or some activity. I got no beef with going to Wawa and getting a turkey sandwich. If you're not in the mood to eat, they got smoothies. I have, I'm going to tell you one thing. The person who turned me on to Wawa was somebody I grew up with. We went to the beach uh, two summers ago, and I said something that I was hungry. I was going to walk, and she goes, no. I stopped at Wawa and got sandwiches. Now, I grew up with this girl. You know, she ain't going to walk in the subway or nothing. She's from the same mindset. She's my age. She goes, try this uh, Wawa tuna sandwich with hot peppers and sweet peppers. I almost died, Lee. How good it was. I was in shock. I really, really was. So if I'm in a pinch, I, look, I'm not going to eat the pizza from Wawa when you have what we have over here. That's a waste of fucking energy. <clears throat> but I've heard from people that, again, I trust. I like these people that they've gone in there to tell me how good the burritos are in Wawa. And I had another brother of mine tell me he loved the enchiladas. But he lives in Delaware, so I got to give him a pass. <laughs> yeah, they don't. I remember, like, Steve Simone turned me on to Wawa and did for a stoner. It's it's heaven, it's just everything that you can do, and that you can do it on the computer, and you don't have to talk, you don't have to talk to anybody. That's like the worst part of going out when you're high sometimes, but. It, it kills me when it's sometimes the one one of the ones by your house I don't like there's like there's a there's bad ones and I think I think they're higher like it's always bad 
But there's I go to the one ones is, that don't have a gas on them. A smart. Okay, so I get a little bit higher level. Where this one is, it's a little higher level. To be honest with you, store is fucking spotless. You know, uh, I don't get anything. I've heard from the grapevine. Now, I've had there in a pinch. I had a smoothie one day, and it was fucking delicious. Okay? Oh, no yeah. I didn't get the whipped cream or nothing. You know, I'm trying to keep my fucking Bella Figura. But I had the my neighbors, and they're Jersey, Staten Island people. They say they have tremendous milkshakes. Tremendous. See, I they love the milkshakes. The kids love them. The parents love them. See, and I don't think you have the same rule. I'm, I, I love a milkshake, but I don't like doing it during the meal. So I never get them out because I don't, I don't want it to melt. I can't, I, I have to do it in order. I don't know what it is. Like as fat as I am and as many times as I went to McDonald's, I never eat fries on the way home. Ne there, there's rule. Like I can't. You're a chubby guy with rules. I can't and do I it. See that. But like me, this is why after this fucking podcast, you're going to call better help and get some help. Because you need help, cocksucker. You don't yes, need I fries. Do. When fucking McDonald's, you eat everything you get as quick as you can before you die. <laughs> and you can fuck walk away with fries. or I don't drink a milkshake because I don't know what you're talking about. It's going to melt. What What's going to fucking melt? You have to you eat it like a gentleman. You eat your burger and your fries at home. And then that's why I can't get dessert. It pisses me. I can't do it. I can't have the milkshake before the burger. No, I, I don't know why. First off, first, let's, let's get to the bottom of this shit. And now I got to teach fat man etiquette, okay? First off, in your case, because case, you're addicted to that Diet Coke shit, which is worse than smoking crack every night. Well, if you got a cheeseburger, if you got a, let's say a quarter pounder. Right. With cheese and a fucking order of fries, right? Absolutely. You're gonna drop a motherfucking uh, a Coke Zero in there with extra ice, whatever. Of course, well, you might drop. I go light ice, but fries, okay. But like for the regular consumer that lives in Iowa, yeah, he's gonna get one of those Staminka shakes and whatever. Like me, I like my shake for dessert. Like when I was throwing shakes into the equation, I would go to a diner. Like I just started going back to a diner. And I'm very happy. I'm going back to my roots. <laughs> my favorite one is a diner called the Manala Pan Diner. They have stolen my heart. The woman who's one of the owners is from North Bergen originally. She started a diner on 6th Street in North Bergen, you know, which I, I know the diner. I can't remember the name of it right now. It's 815 at night. But I, uh, I uh, go there once a week. She's got a fantastic split pea soup. I love a tremendous pizza. motherfucking uh, navy bean soup. Yeah, I, I love a high meatloaf. It's fucking to kill for. And they just put stew on the menu. Because my wife ain't going to make a stew. Not well, You know, my daughter don't eat that shit. My wife makes a good stew, but it's going to be, we're going to eat two servings apiece. I'd rather go over there, spend a small 15 and got a nice bowl of fucking stew with six pieces of white bread and butter, and you just go off. You make sure you go to the gym that day, you do your jumping jacks, you do your kettlebells, and you go there, and it's a treat for me. Do they have, does anyone else order stew? What, brother? Does anyone else order stew? Yeah, she does great with the stew there. It's wintertime. We've had rain for four days. I don't have to tell you that. It's I been like heard Johnny Mook down here. I feel like people in the, in the perfect storm. <laughs> Marky Warburg and George Clooney when they got killed up there fishing with the fucking other dude from New Jack City. It has been raining a lot. So you've, you've been loving. I, that's I've been surprised you. I've been down to see you ten times, maybe. All right, somewhere around. we've never been to a diner. So you just started going back. I went back about three months ago. Before North Carolina, I went back. I started with a cheese omelet. With home fries, wheat toast, and a nice tea with extra lemon, like a doctor. That's your test no, meal? No sugar. Yeah. If you fail there, we can't hang. But I had been in there a couple of times before. That's where Vic D goes for breakfast. Okay. Victor Petitetto goes there for breakfast. And I've 
join them for breakfast there. You know, two eggs, sunny side, a bacon, a bowl of oatmeal. Who's better than you? <laughs> they open up at seven. But I have a good breakfast at the house, so I don't go out to eat breakfast anymore. I maintain a, a steady breakfast at the house. Half a piece I like of put it toast, half a piece of wheat toast, two eggs sunny side up, and a bowl of raspberries, bananas, apples, cantaloupes, whatever I can find. Damn. That's a, you know, I'm trying to, Doug, you got to try. You that's like a, a breakfast, one of the commercials. That's like a real and fucking then I'm breakfast. Gonna, I'm finish up here with you tonight. Okay. Fucking eat like two more of these edibles. I don't have nothing tomorrow morning, you know. Not that I'll sleep till fucking 10, you know. But I, as long as I know in my mind, I got none to tomorrow morning. Maybe I'll stay up a little late tonight, watch something a little later. We got two games on Monday Night Football, Philadelphia, Tampa Bay, 7-15. I think 8-15, you got the Rams at Cincinnati. You know what, man? Oh, last you know time I checked? Yom huh? Kippur, and they don't give a fuck. They got two games going on. And that's no. good because right now Jewish people could sit there, eat fucking hollow bread, jump up and down, stew, pastrami. They could eat anything they want tonight, though, right? No, they can't eat. I don't know if you can eat stew. Well, stew you probably had kosher beef, you could. But like, yeah, you, but you could eat. It's usually All breakfast. Right. Brisket tonight. Oh, I love brisket. With rye bread, a little fucking no, mayo. Pepper. You really are Jewish. I can't do the rye bread. Come on now. Not like fucking regular Staminka bread. There's rye bread and then there's fucking rye bread that those people make at their own delis. Like yeah, Langers. that's good. So nobody would ever understand if I, when I say to them, go eat pastrami at Langer's, they'll look at me and go, why would I leave New York to eat pastrami at Langer's, Joey? Let me tell you something. The piece of bread you're going to eat the pastrami on at Langer's, you're never going to eat a piece of bread like that in your life. It's like a a rye Italian bread. I can't explain it to you. You know, I cannot explain it to you. Nobody would go there to eat pastrami, but I would. I saw your boy Tom Hanks there one time getting 10 sandwiches with a bunch of foster kids. I don't even know if they were foster kids or he was taking them to Bolivia on a family trip. Why well, is he my boy? I don't know. I thought you liked the movie Big. I do like the movie Big. All right, then. Then he's your boy, cocksucker. <laughs> What do you got planned this week? Where are the open mics at, Lisa? I at? This week's the big week, man. This week, Thursday it, through Saturday, I'm in Omaha at the Funny Bone opening for Josh Wolf. That so I, is fucking primo number one club. The owner there is uh, it's not an investor. When you work comedy clubs, you're going to go to clubs where the owner is an investor. He came from a chain of restaurants, and there was a new mall opening. And he figured he'd buy a, a funny bone or an improv or something like that. Anybody could do that. But, like, it kills you that you go into these clubs sometimes and this person that's judging you doesn't know anything about comedy. They've been doing comedy. For, they've been watching comedy for three years. They, they bought into comedy. You know, like, I remember doing a club where the guy came from a chain of restaurants. Every time I go up to do 30 minutes, he would sit by the stage, stand, and just look at me because he was petrified. And I had to pull him aside with him and go, Doug, you, you got to knock it off. You know, you make it. Well, I just heard of your behavior on stage. and That's what they came to see. They didn't come to see you stand there on the side like a fucking mummy. I Where would my, he stand? I'm telling you, Lee, he would stand. On the right side. I'm sorry. I thought it was left. On the right side there. Right you know, in the front? Stage, yeah, right there with his arms crossed. Like a fucking sleeping pill. I can't have that. No. I can't have that. So we had words after the first show Thursday. We had words again Friday and Saturday. It was too busy. You couldn't stand that. It was too busy. I was a feature then. But I remember like he called me back years later. You know, to go, I never step foot in that fucking club again. But my point is that when you do comedy and you're getting beat up at every fucking level, you know, it's nice to work a club every once in a while that the person has been involved in comedy in some way or the other for 30 years. Their whole life has been comedy. You know, they were married, have kids, and now this is their focus of their life. They take care of you. 
like a great comedy club owner. They welcome you. When you get to your room, there's always something for you there in Nebraska. You know, Colleen is a, it's a four show, five show weekend. You know, it's a great fucking club. And here's the crazy thing. When you're a young comic, like from a guy from Boston, you think of Omaha, Nebraska, and you're like, well, who am I going to talk to there? A piece of beef? What, what am I going to do there? What's going to come to my show? A butcher? Let me tell you something. <laughs> People laugh harder than anywhere you go. They take the ride with you. They're dirty. And there's nothing, no better feeling than that, where the comedy club owner only comes there to watch you to see and, and give you confidence. And she's one of those club owners. So I'm so I'm happy excited. We're going there at this level of your comedy career because it's a breather. It's you know what, man? An idiot that played the piano in high school. And now he wants to tell you not to be say the word Jew on stage. And you're like, <laughs> knock it the fuck off. Take a hike around the building, will you? You know, I, I'm a, I'm a comedy podcast fan. You know, we did the church for all that time. I love I listen to all of them, and there's a few clubs that, like you, all of you guys talk about. You talk about the store. You talked about like Cap City, Comedy Works in Denver, um, Zanies. Like, there's a few clubs that seem to be like clubs that like comics get excited about. And for some reason, and it just sticks in your head because you're right. It is it's Omaha, Nebraska, which I don't think I think I drove through once. But, like everyone talks about how cool it is, and I, I'm just, yeah, I'm just so excited. You know, when, as a comic, you get so excited about big moves. You know, like this week, I'm going to go to Vegas. I remember the first time I went to Vegas. I'm not going to tell you the club or the, it was a week-long club. And it was one of the b biggest disappointments of my life. I can't tell you how sad I was by Thursday. And I still had fucking, you know, eight more shows left or something. All you want to do is go home. You sign up to do comedy, and next thing you know, I'm on an elevator getting hit by swords with little fucking kids, you know. It was, <laughs> then I got to do two shows a night. They come up to you before the show and tell you you got to be spotless. I got to wait for the guy to walk out of the room for me to do a fucking pussy joke or a fart joke. or. And I was like, this ain't worth it. This isn't Las Vegas to me. I thought I was going to walk out of here like fucking Dean Martin and have a great time, but I also worked there with Dice in the beginning. And I saw how it was for a guy like in his stature. When we opened for him, I'd go up there and light my ball sack on fire. Nobody would say two fucking words to me, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, where you at this week, brother man? I'm I'm there. I'm in Omaha, a ton of the rest of the week. I'll be at open mics in, in Worcester. People came out to that. The com other comics at the at the open mics were very excited to hear about it. So I'm um, that's that's that. And then I have uh, something October 5th in Connecticut. Okay. Well, let's not worry the, about October 5th. It's the next let's week. Let's worry about this weekend. See how you're going to tackle it. I mean, we're going to want notes from you. Okay. On what? Monday's podcast, how you think you did, what could have been better. I mean, because this is a two-man show. Right. This is uh, something that you only did with me years ago where you got to go up there and do 20 minutes. And I used to break your balls and go, you got to do 40 minutes tonight, very nonchalantly. You know, uh, Lee, you earned your stripes, brother. I used These motherfuckers don't know how I used to give you edibles and tell you all day you were doing 10 minutes, you and eight other comics, and then we get to the ice house, and I go, everybody canceled. You got <laughs> fucking 60 minutes. And guys, his, his, you could just see the color leave his little Jewish cheeks oh. and see fucking steam coming out of his ears. And I would hold them to it for about 20 minutes. Nobody else is coming. Go in the back and get your material ready. He'd be making Jewish <laughs> noises, you know, the whole fucking thing. And then he'd go up there and do great, you know, 10 minutes, 12 minutes. And then I'd get off stage an hour later and go, I can't fucking believe you did that to me. I was back there. <laughs> like that. I wanted to get in my car and go home. That's the oh. mark of a fucking true comic, brother. And that's what I'm getting. Hey, listen. If we call each other, this is the same conversation you hear, people. Yeah. There's nothing edited here, except, you know, I tell them about DraftKings and what I bet. Blah, blah. But besides that, you know, this is what but we But you talk. do tell me that stuff. What stuff? You call, we'll talk about sports all the time. 
Oh, yeah, but we talk about a lot of other things in that. Yeah. What we're going to do is one time is really get on the phone and go deep with our topics. Like when we talk about gay people and Eric the Fag and all that shit, you know, how he jerks off on people's feet and stuff. You know, that's that's the phone call they want to hear when we're both higher than fuck and we're just dying on the phone. You know, before I said to you, he called me up and he goes, I already took the edibles. I go, I don't know. You don't sound retarded. And we start <laughs> dying of laughter. That's what the checking is all about. What do you think? Absolutely. I love it, man. Where are you, I, where are you tomorrow night? Tomorrow night is uh, I will be in two places. I'll be at the Blackstone in Worcester, and I'll be at the at uh, Rick's in Woonsocket. You're fucking beautiful, brother. If you go to see any of Lee's shows, please say hello to him and uh, report back to me how he did. You know, my Twitter is at Mad Flavor. Let me know if this motherfucker should have called in a bomb alert. <laughs> or uh no, I have all the confidence in the world. You're gonna do great this week, brother. That's Thank a great you, place. She makes you feel at home, so it takes the fucking steam off. You know, again, you're half neurotic, but it could be worse. I could be there torturing you. So I'm way more I'm way more than half neurotic, but thank you. My brother, have a great week. And let's uh close out the show with some sponsors, guys. Love you. Thank you for checking out the check-in, checking out the check-in. What am I a fucking idiot? <laughs> Stay black and I'll see you in October. Bye guys. Blue Chew. Listen, I love Blue Chew. Everybody loves a guy who self-assured in the bedroom, and Blue Chew can help make sure you're ready whenever the mood strikes. Blue Chew is an online service that delivers ED medicine straight to your door. Nobody knows nothing. With the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but at a fraction of the cost. Just sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you, re you receive your prescription within days. It's all online. No doctor's office. Nobody giving you a brow beaten. It's a beautiful thing. They each come in a little blue package. When you feel something or you bump into somebody that could be a stranger, you pop one and you do what you need to do. Blue Chew comes in a discreet package so your nosy no neighbors don't ever know what they got. Unless they want the yum yum. You know what I'm saying? Ah, Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Again, chew it and do it, Jack. That's a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you have promo code Joey at checkout. Just pay $5 for shipping. Again, that's bluechew.com. Code Joey to you receive your first month. Visit bluechew.com. For more details, remember, promo code Joey. And the check-in is also brought to you by Babbel. Listen, I know I'm babbling right now. Anyway, only 22% of Americans speak a language. Can you believe that? Even me, Uncle Joey, I got like three languages. <laughs> if you want to shake up your daily routine, why not learn a new language and help raise that rate? You ever get on a on an Uber? You don't know what nobody's saying. This is the perfect time when you get an Uber to have Babbel. Instead of paying hundreds of dollars for a private tutor or using other language apps to a little bit more than games, Babbel is an effective way to give your Uber driver a tremendous ear beat. Designed by over 150 language experts, using Babbel for just 15 hours, 15 hours, has shown to be equivalent to a full semester of college language course. Listen. I played with Babbel a little bit. I like their little Spanish course. Give it a try. You know, Spanish is the number one language people are talking right now. You want to jump on that bandwagon. You always want to be able to get into the baseball game. You know what I'm saying? With over 10 million subscriptions sold, Babbel is a real language learning for real conversations. Here's a special limited deal for our listeners to get you started right now. 
Get 55% off your Babbel prescriptions, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash Joey. Again, babbel.com slash Joey. I'm getting you 55% off. Who gives you a deal like that? Nobody. Spell Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash Joey. Rules and restrictions may apply. Welcome to the check-in. 